step into the captivating world of Henry Orient, a 1964 film that weaves humor, shock, and sorrow into a delightful tapestry. Have you ever wondered about the funny, shocking, and sometimes sad facts that unfold on the screen? Well, keep watching. The storyline revolves around two teenage girls who stumble upon the eccentric pianist Henry Orient. As they navigate the complexities of adolescence, their lives become entangled with the whimsical and unpredictable Henry. The movie unfolds with a mix of laughter, surprise, and moments that tug at your heartstrings. Now, here's a question for you. Can you recall the first time you experienced the charm of the world of Henry Orient? Share your memories in the comments below as we'd love to hear your unique stories and perspectives. As you reminisce, think about your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this classic film. Whether it's a laugh out loud moment or a scene that left a lasting impression, we want to know. Your stories add depth to the rich tapestry of this cinematic gem. So join the conversation and share your thoughts. Your anecdotes might just spark a trip down memory lane for others. After all, the world of Henry Orient is filled with moments worth remembering. In 1964, a cinematic gem unfolded, making an indelible mark on the cultural landscape of its time. As audiences stepped into the whimsical world of the eccentric pianist, they were treated to a tapestry of humor, shock, and moments that resonated with the complexities of adolescence. The narrative, revolving around two teenage girls entangled with the unpredictable character, unfolded with a mix of laughter and heartstring tugging scenes. During its time, the movie received acclaim for its unique blend of humor and emotion. Viewers found themselves captivated by the charming yet unpredictable lead actor. The film's exploration of adolescence struck a chord with audiences, making it a relatable and enjoyable experience for many. The impact extended beyond the silver screen, leaving an enduring legacy in popular culture. Spin-offs and adaptations emerged, breathing new life into the beloved characters and storyline. The movie's influence was not confined to the theater. It permeated into the realms of literature, with tie-in novels and other forms of media emerging to satisfy the appetite of fans. Merchandise associated with the film became a testament to its cultural impact. From posters and t-shirts to collectibles featuring iconic scenes, the world found a place in the hearts of fans who sought tangible connections to the cinematic masterpiece. The enduring popularity of such merchandise is a testament to the lasting impression left by the film. In the annals of cinematic history, it stands as a remarkable piece of storytelling that continues to resonate with audiences. Its impact on popular culture is not only seen in the immediate reception during its time, but also in the ongoing appreciation and nostalgia that persists through the years. The legacy lives on, a testament to the enduring power of a well-crafted and emotionally resonant narrative. Explore the quirks of Peter Sellers' portrayal in the world of Henry Orient. Sellers, known for his chameleon-like abilities, seamlessly transitions from a generic European accent to a New York Brooklyn twang. Interestingly, this change mirrors his imitation of Stanley Kubrick's voice, with Kubrick having directed Sellers in Lolita and Doctor Strange Love. Adding a familial touch to the cast, Peter Dutchin, son of bandleader Eddie Dutchin from the Eddie Dutchin story, made his acting debut as Joe Daniels, the piano player at the Boyd's Christmas party. A noteworthy debut, Dutchin's inclusion adds a personal touch to the film. Before settling on Sellers, the role of Henry Orient saw consideration from a lineup of distinguished actors including David Wayne, Robert Preston, Gig Young, Sir Rex Harrison, Tony Randall, and Dick Van. The casting process underscores the film's potential, with each actor bringing a unique flavor to the character that eventually found its match in Sellers. The world of Henry Orient's casting decisions, from Sellers' accent choices to Dutchin's debut, and the array of actors considered provide a fascinating glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics. These choices contribute to the film's distinct character and offer a diverse blend of talents that enrich the viewing experience. Amidst the casting choices for roles in the movie, actresses like Haley Mills, Patty Duke, Sue Lyon, Laurel Goodwin, and others were considered, including numerous unknown talents. However, director George Roy Hill specifically selected 16-year-old model Walker for the role of Val after assessing hundreds of auditions. Walker's performance left a significant impact, prompting filmmakers to reshape the film during editing to amplify her character's role. Notably, a scene of her walking through a snowy Central Park was added post-production. 
In the 2000s, Walker disclosed that she and Hill developed a romantic relationship during filming, enduring into most of her senior high school year. This, coupled with Hollywood gossip, contributed to her decision to retire from acting in the early 1970s. The film held the honor of being the official U.S. entry at the 1964 Cannes Film Festival, a testament to its recognition on the global cinematic stage. The debut performances of Tippi Walker and Mary Spieth in the world of Henry Orient marked the beginning of their respective journeys in the world of acting. Walker, who eventually withdrew from the acting scene in the 1970s, and Spieth, only 15 during filming and with minimal prior acting experience, entered the spotlight with this film. Spieth, discovered through a school drama department recommendation, made her sole appearance in this cinematic venture. Premiering at Radio City Music Hall, the film's allure extended beyond its narrative, incorporating distinctive elements. The phone used by Peter Sellers' character Henry Orient in his bedroom was an Eric Hoffen from Sweden. Remarkably, this foreign phone was among the rare exceptions Allow would in the U.S. during the monopoly of Bell Telephone. Bell Telephone, feeling threatened by the unique design, countered with the creation of the Trimline phone to safeguard their telephone network. Intriguingly, Peter Sellers showcased his chameleon-like talents, effortlessly transitioning accents in his portrayal of Henry Orient. The film's casting journey unfolded with considerations for various actors, including David Wayne, Robert Preston, Gig Young, Sir Rex Harrison, Tony Randall, and Dick Van. Ultimately, Sellers brought a distinct flavor to the character. Noteworthy casting decisions also included the debut of Peter Dutchin, son of bandleader Eddie Dutchin, adding a familial touch to the film. The intricate process of selecting actors enriched the movie's character, offering a diverse blend of talents that contributed to the overall viewing experience. The casting choices for female roles underwent a meticulous process as well. Director George Roy Hill selected Tippi Walker for the role of Val after evaluating numerous auditions. Walker's impactful performance led to post-production adjustments, including the addition of a scene in snowy Central Park. Walker's personal connection with Hill during filming, revealed later, played a role in her decision to retire from acting in the early 1970s. The world of Henry Orient's recognition as the official U.S. entry at the 1964 Cannes Film Festival solidified its place on the global cinematic stage, emphasizing its impact and acclaim. In the summer and fall of 1963, the camera rolled to capture the essence of the world of Henry Orient. Screenwriter Johnson acknowledged director Hill's dedication, praising his inventive use of trampolines and slow motion during runs through Central Park. This marked the first instance of slow motion in an American commercial feature, creating a soaring childhood quality. Meanwhile, Peter Sellers, immersed in his role, faced real-life challenges as a fan stalked him during the movie's production. Despite the off-screen disturbance, the on-screen results showcased Hill's commitment to bringing a unique visual quality to the narrative. Director Hill's opening sequences, featuring two girls frolicking through Central Park, stand as a cinematic tribute to the Big Apple. The innovative use of trampolines and slow motion captured the essence of childhood freedom, setting a precedent in American film. In the backdrop of the movie-making process, Peter Sellers grappled with a personal intrusion highlighting the complexities of fame. This behind-the-scenes drama added another layer to the already multifaceted world of Henry Orient. The world of Henry Orient not only unfolded as a narrative, but became a canvas for experimentation and dedication in filmmaking. Hill's contributions from technical innovations to managing unforeseen challenges reflected a director committed to delivering a unique cinematic experience. Peter Sellers, navigating both the fictional and real-world challenges, showcased his dedication to the craft. The film, with its memorable sequences and real-life intrigues, captured the spirit of 1960s filmmaking, leaving an enduring mark on the cinematic landscape. The world of Henry Orient stands as a testament to the dedication of its creators, a movie that goes beyond the screen to reveal the intricacies of filmmaking and the challenges faced by those involved.